We are very honored to be joined by Jose Panera. He is the founder of the International Center for Pension Reform. He is the former Labor and Social Security Minister of Chile and a distinguished senior fellow at the Cato Institute up from Santiago into D.C., which is where we are. Jose, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you very much, Brian. Last week, we hit hard on the program, the latest Pew Center study showing that states have about a trillion dollar gap in their just state pension plans. How do we solve that? Well, that is a very serious problem, and I am extremely worried about all the debts America has. But you have a much bigger problem, Brian. You have a hundred trillion dollar problem. Look, this is something published by the American government saying that the present value of the obligations on health and social security amount to a hundred trillion dollars. Okay, wait a minute. Uh we were talking about three point something trillion, one trillion underfunded. You're saying we have a hundred trillion dollars. Where, where is that number coming from? How do we get to a hundred trillion? This comes from the government. These are net liabilities of the health, Medicare, and social security system. This is the present value of what Americans will have, one way or another, to pay unless they default on their obligation to the citizens. And that is the future. And I'm extremely worried because it is like you're passengers in the Titanic. You see, the Titanic is going toward the iceberg of aging populations, but populations that are feel entitled to all these huge benefits that the politicians have promised the people. But they have not funded the benefits for the future. So how are you going to pay them? That is the big issue, the big domestic problem facing America. How does the if U.S. cover $100 trillion, Jose? Brian, the problem is what I call the entitlement state. The problem is that there is a gigantic disconnect between what people want the government to pay them in the future, in health, pensions, and what the people want to pay in tax. And because the entitlement state is based on promises for the future, you don't have to pay today. This is growing because to win elections, politicians offer benefits to people that will be paid in the future. So this big hole is not only a problem in America, it's exactly the same problem in Greece today, in southern Europe, eventually in France, in Germany. The West will go bankrupt until, unless you reform deeply the entitlement state. This was created by Prince Bismarck in the 19th century, and you are all prisoners of Prince Bismarck, prisoners of a system of that is Otto not... Otto von Bismarck. Yes. Because he created... He created the unfunded tax and expense system. You see, he simply said, if you tax workers a little, we can pay the pensions. But then the unintended consequence has been that with the aging of population and the extended life, you have been accumulating these huge liabilities that eventually will bankrupt the government. A huge fiscal crisis is coming to the West unless you face it and confront it directly by completely changing the entitlement state. That is the root of the problem. How do we just solve the pension crisis on government workers, federal and state? And is it, is it unsustainable as it is? It is totally unsustainable. You either will have to raise taxes big time in America or you will have to cut benefits. But it's extremely difficult to do that in a system in which you have people entitled to all these things. That's why what we did in Chile was to completely change the logic. In Chile, you save for old age. In Chile, we have a sort of Benjamin Franklin system. You see, you remember Benjamin Franklin, the 13 virtues, you should save for the future, you should be self-reliant. So we have instilled a culture of personal responsibility and saving. Of course, we also have a safety net for the very poor, but okay. 80, 85 percent of the population will finance their old age, health and pension with their own personal savings. There's a lot of debate in this country about whether or not our social security plan, our system is going to be there for people that are in their 20s and 30s. And there's a big debate about whether or not we're going to be solvent by 2040. Do you, do you believe that the U.S. system as it is now can be solvent decades from now? Clearly not. In clearly only, not. Clearly not. In only seven years, the social security system will begin to have a deficit. That is, more money will have to be spent than money coming in. And then you will face the very hard choices. You will probably have to increase the retirement age. You will probably have to increase payroll tax. You may have to cut benefits unless 
you change the paradigm and you go to a system of personal accounts. Personal accounts is very simple. You save for old age and that saving get accumulated rate of return so you benefit from that extraordinary force of compound interest and when you reach 65 you don't look whether the government is in deficit or in surplus you look at the balance of your account and with that you buy an annuity for life is a system that we had all over the world before Otto von Bismarck a Prussian chancellor created this monster of the unfunded welfare state that is bankrupting Europe and eventually the U.S. That is the problem with Social Security, right? It's that we are using money now. Instead of me saving for myself, the money that is taken out of my paycheck, out of everybody in this room's paycheck, is being paid to current beneficiaries. Exactly. You, have, you have described that as a Ponzi scheme. That is a Ponzi scheme. You could even call it the Madoff scheme. You see, the, because it's, a, it's the well, idea... Hopefully the money is real somewhere. No, there is no money being saved for the future. There is no funding. There is no trust fund. You are paying the money immediately to the retirees. And the problem is that with the baby boom generation retiring, with the expectancy of life increasing every single year because of your great doctors and researchers, you will not be able to pay the promises. So the system will eventually default, technically default, in the sense that you will have to break the promises to the people. And that may create a lot of pain and a lot of anguish. That's why you have to look into the future, do the responsible thing, and begin moving toward a system of personal accounts. It's the only long-term solution. How would we implement a system like yours with everybody already expecting the current system to be there for them? The, the first decision that I took as Secretary of Labor and Social Security in Chile was to guarantee the benefits of the elderly. I call it, we are not going to take your grandmother check away. We will find a way to protect the elderly. So the system has to be changed for the young people, for the future that will are coming into the labor force or are already in the first years of the labor force. And the moment you change the dynamic and people begin to know that if they save more, they work more, they will get a better pension out of their own saving, then the whole system begins Here's to the, improve. The, the criticism will be that we are at an 11 year flat line for the stock market, that if you have your money in the stock market for 11 years, you're basically flat. That's what people will say, that the stock market has proven that it's not a wealth creator, at least in the short term. The stock market is today, the Dow Jones, are around 10,000. Uh, 10, 10, yeah. Well, do you know how much it was when we began our system in Chile 30 years ago? 30 years ago, 1980, uh, two grand, Dow 2000? 900. The Dow Jones was 900. So in 30, if you had began your system at the same moment that Chile began, you would have benefited enormously from the stock market. Yeah, because ten, it was tenfold a, gain. Okay. And you don't have to put all the money in the stock market at all. We don't put it at all. You can have a, a, a very diversified portfolio of corporate bonds, of mortgages, of government T-bills, of stocks, international. You have to be very prudent with long-term money. That's how we have been in Chile. And that's why we have been able able to give workers a rate of return of 9% above inflation for 30 years compounded. Like in Chile, they take 10% out, automatically put that into a private account that's not for use for current beneficiaries. It's our money. Yes. Correct? Yes, correct. Your money protected constitutionally. That money grows in your account exponentially, compounded 45 years. So forget the, the two can or the three, four years. Can the government tap into it? In no, Chile, no if the way. government gets in financial difficulty, can they go raid that no money? No way. It's protected by property rights. No way. This is your money. We have accumulated already 70% of GDP in that money. The capital markets in Chile have a, a boom, have increased. We are financing the new infrastructure, the new uh, growth of the uh, industrial, the forest, the mining with this money. So in Chile, instead of having a huge trillion dollar debt, as you have, we have a, a, a huge funded system of retirement.